In this video, you will learn how to create a simple chair in Blender. I will teach everything from modeling and adding hair particle systems, all the way through to creating realistic materials, lighting, and finally rendering. Start off by deleting everything. Add in a cylinder for the seat cushion by pressing Shift A. In edit mode, press S to scale it down. Then type 0.3 so that it is roughly the size of a real chair. Press S again, and then Z to scale the cushion to be flatter. Press G, and then Z to move the seat up above the ground plane. In the Modifiers menu, add in a subdivision surface modifier to round the edges of the cushion. Increase the levels to 3. To bring back some structure, add in loop cuts. The top of the cushion has some weird geometry. To fix this, Alt select the top loop, press E followed by S, and drag the loop in. Repeat this on the bottom. Tab out of edit mode, right click, and select Shade Smooth. The seat is now complete. Add in a cube for the backrest. Tab into edit mode and scale down the cube so that it is the same size as the cylinder. Press S then Z to shorten the backrest slightly. Then G to bring it up so that the bottom of the cube is in line with the bottom of the cushion. Switch to face select mode. Select the front face, press G then Y to push it about halfway back. This will shorten the armrests. In edge select mode, select the front top edge and drag it down so that the backrest will slope down to the armrests. Back in face select mode, select the top, front, and bottom faces. Press X and select delete faces. Select the two back corners, press Ctrl B to bevel them. Use the scroll wheel to increase the number of segments. Make sure that the two sides do not overlap. Now, in the Modifiers menu, add in a Solidify modifier. Increase the thickness and adjust the offset so that the backrest fits nicely around the cushion. Make sure that the checkbox next to even thickness is checked. Tab out of Edit Mode to apply the Solidify modifier. Once it is applied, Add in a subdivision surface modifier. Increase the segments to 3. This will round out the design. To bring back some structure, tab back into edit mode. Add in edge loops near the top, bottom, and front of the backrest to sharpen the edges a bit. Tab out of edit mode. Right click and select shade smooth. The backrest is now complete. Add in a cylinder for the legs. In edit mode, scale it way down. Then scale it up in the Z direction. Looking from the front, press G to move the leg to the right. Then add in a mirror modifier. Make sure that the Y-axis is selected so that it mirrors in the correct direction. Press R to rotate the legs into position. Alt select the top edge and scale it up slightly to give the legs a taper. Then press A to select the legs and G to move them to the desired location. From the side, drag the legs forward. Then select the X-axis so that they are also mirrored front to back. Then press R and Y to rotate them slightly. Once happy with the position, Alt select the bottom edge of the legs, press S followed by Z and then 0 to give them a flat bottom. With the bottom loop still selected, press Ctrl B to round out the bottom of the leg. Tab out of edit mode, right click, and select Shade Smooth. Now. Add in a cylinder for the leg supports. Before going into edit mode, rotate the cylinder 90 degrees along the x-axis. This will make the wood grain material run long ways on these supports later on. Then tab into edit mode and scale it down, and lengthen it in the y direction. Use the G and Z keys to position the cylinder between the two front legs. Scale it so that it intersects with the legs, but does not protrude beyond them. Now. Looking at the chair from the side, add in a mirror modifier. It should be mirrored along the x-axis. Then drag the rod forwards so that it intersects with the front legs. Tab out of edit mode and select Shade Smooth. We will now repeat this process for the next two support rods. Add in a cylinder and rotate it along the y-axis by 90 degrees before pressing tab to go into edit mode. 
then scale it down and elongate it in the X direction. After that, move it up to the desired height. Add in a mirror modifier along the Y axis this time, and position the rods between the left and right legs. Tab out of edit mode, right click, and select Shade Smooth. The chair model is now complete. It is time to move on to materials. With the cushion selected, add in a new particle system. Switch from emitter to hair. To get a nice fuzzy material, reduce the length to around 0.01. This is beginning to look better, but there are still a few things we need to add. Increase the number to 10,000. And under children, switch to interpolated and increase the display amount to 100. This can be hard for your computer to handle, and since it is just the display amount, it won't affect the final render, but it does make it easier to see what's going on. It is a good idea to rename the particle system, as well as the rest of the components of the chair. Now select the backrest, add in a new particle system, then from the drop-down menu, select the particle system that we just created for the seat. This should automatically make the backrest fuzzy too. Now go to the shading window. With the seat selected, create a new material. I kept this one pretty simple, just adjust the base color and increase roughness. This will leave you with a nice, soft looking material. Now select the backrest and from the drop down next to new material, select the material that we just created. The wood material for the legs is a bit more complicated, but if you follow along, you'll be surprised how much control you have over just how the wood will look. Add a bump node connected to the normal. Then add a noise texture node to the height of the bump node. Connected to the vector of the noise texture node, add in a magic texture. Then a mapping node. And lastly a texture coordinate node connected from vector to object. It is beginning to look like wood, but something is definitely off. Color will help. Add in a color ramp node that connects the noise texture to the base color. Adjust one color to be an orange slash red color. And the other to be a dark brown. Hold down control and click in the middle to add in a third color. Make this a light brown. It will be the most prominent color of the wood. Slide the middle color closer to the left, and also bring the dark brown slightly to the left. This can also be tweaked later on, once all the other settings have been adjusted. Reduce the strength of the bump node to 0.1. This will soften the texture. Then on the noise texture node, increase the roughness to 0.8. And bring up the detail all the way to 15. And finally increase the distortion. To make the wood grain run down the length of the leg, increase the scale on the mapping node to 12 on both the X and Y axis. And the very last adjustment is to reduce the scale on the magic texture to be 0.6. The wood texture should be looking pretty good now. Tweak any of the settings to get it just how you want. Once happy, select the support rods and under the drop down menu next to new material, select the wood texture that we just created. Since we rotated the cylinders before going into edit mode, the wood grain is running perfectly horizontal rather than vertically like it is on the legs. The chair is now completely finished. We will now move on to the backdrop camera and lighting. Shift A and add in a plane. Tab in edit mode and scale it up. Select the back two edges, press E, then Z to extrude up a back wall. Then select the corners and press Ctrl B to round them out. Use the scroll wheel to increase the number of segments for a smoother curve. Tab out of edit mode. Right click and select Shade Smooth. This will create a nice smooth backdrop with no visible corners. Shift A to add in a camera. Then view the chair from the angle you want your render to be from. Go to the drop down menu under View and select a line view, then a line active camera to view. I then went to the output menu and adjusted the size so that it would be square. With the camera selected, go into the camera menu and play around with the focal length.
I then went back to the layout tab. Switching to the rendered view in the upper right hand corner, we see that it is very dark. To fix this, I added three lights. I placed an area light right above the chair. Then I added in another area light and rotated it along the Y axis and moved it into position so that it shines diagonally down from the right side of the image. Press Shift D to duplicate that light and rotate it along the Z axis. Then move it so that it shines down from the left side of the image. By viewing the chair from above, it is much easier to align the light in the desired position. With the right light selected, go into the light menu. I decided to adjust this light to be a bit more direct. Switch it from an area light to a sunlight. This leaves very crisp shadows to reduce this, increase the angle of the light, and reduce its power. I didn't like how it was casting a shadow on the back wall, so I rotated it about the Z-axis slightly. Now that it is a sunlight, it no longer needs to be pointed directly at the chair to light it. Everything is now complete. Go to the Render tab to adjust a few settings. First switch the Render Engine from EV to Cycles. This can be hard on the computer, so I switched the viewport out of render view. Reduce the number of render samples to something around 200. The higher this number, the longer it will take to render. Now go up to the render drop down menu and select render image. And wait! I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video. The blend file of this chair can be acquired using the link in the description. Thanks for the support, and until next time, keep designing.